Welcome back to the Lasting Smile podcast. I'm Dr. Frank Lamar, prosthodontist and clinical founder of Highbridge Full Arch. I'm here with my colleague, Dr. Julian Canejo, our clinical lab director. Welcome back, Julian. Thank you, Dr. Frank. Uh, excited to be here again. Some of the, the greatest conversation, the number of questions that you and I get is technology for the digital capture of the implants themselves. We've talked about initial records. Mm -hmm. We've talked about guided surgery. But now we're looking at capturing the implant positions. As a clinician, I, I have analog option. I have uh, intraoral scanner option. We call it iOS. Mm -hmm. uh, photogrammetry and gametry. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go old school first. Mm -hmm. Analog impression, open tray impression. We connect it together. We, we really were just very careful as to how we, how we pick up the implant analogs. Then we mix our stone a certain way, right? Mm -hmm. We vacuum mix it. We pour the model. How accurate? What's the discrepancy around the arch mm -hmm. between that master cast stone model mm -hmm. and the mouth? We need two things to be uh, clinically successful in the long term with the framework. We need to have uh, trueness and precision after uh, reviewing uh, for years this topic and, and doing... Uh, I know this is, a, this is of high interest in a lot of the research that you've done. Yeah, for, for years we were not only uh, doing research but also reviewing the, the, the research that was out there from uh, very other uh, prominent groups. And we know um, a few rules now. When we're using an intraoral scanner, we know that uh, the further away each implant is, the more distant there is between implants, more chance of um, inaccuracies. We also know that the more angulation between the implants, that can also lead to more inaccuracies when we want to just make an intraoral scan of these five, six implants. Before we get into the relative accuracies of the analog impression, mm -hmm the uh, intraoral scan, basic intraoral scan impression, photogrammetry, and gametry. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember in dental school when we used to hear about um, uh, 40 microns? Remember 40 microns? Mm -hmm. what, is, what, is, uh, what happens to be, what is 40 microns relative to? To a hair. Yeah, we're splitting hairs. We're, we're discussing microns right uh -huh. here. Uh, but I think that that's an important aspect for long-term clinical success in, in this world of full arch. Longevity matters. Our patients are making these decisions to have this work done. And I, and I, and I heard it yesterday from a patient. You know, I'm spending you know, $20,000 on my, on my teeth. I, I, I have expectations, sure. right? And the expectations is a lasting smile. And so when we look at the accuracy of the final restoration and how it sits on those implants, and we're talking about the thickness of a hair, or two hairs, or three hairs, right? Mm -hmm. You know, 40 microns, uh, 150 microns. It's a pretty big difference. Yeah. What, what tensions are we creating here when, when we're off by 40, 80, 120 microns? Yeah, yeah that's, that's the, the key question there, right? So um, we know that clinically acceptable is anything that it's within the range of um, 100 microns. But, um, it sounds like a lot. It sounds like a lot, but uh, if you, when you review the literature, I think that's, let's say, the highest of the um, discrepancy that um, mm -hmm. we, we should have. So let's go old school first. Mm -hmm. Analog impression, open tray impression, we connect it together. We, we really were just very careful as to how we, how we pick up the implant analogs then we mix our stone a certain way, right? Mm -hmm. We vacuum mix it, we pour the model. How accurate, what's the discrepancy around the arch mm -hmm. between that master cast stone model mm -hmm. and the mouth? I think that um, we could be uh, at around uh, 80 microns uh, of total uh, discrepancy. Two hairs. All right, so uh, having done thousands of restorations off of analog impressions, I can tell you that as a clinician, these fingertips have gotten to be very sensitive to a lack of passivity. Now, they can't tell you 40, 60, 80, 100 microns, but they can tell you when that screw starts to squeak mm -hmm. and when that resistance is going in there. And I can feel the, the prosthetic adapting to the position of those integrated implants. You know, we, we know that tension creates pull or pressure 
Mm -hmm. And that long-term polar pressure, we theorize, causes implants to fail. Yeah. And uh, when we see implants fail, they don't fail in the first year, do they? I think the year three to five is yeah. like critical. And when somebody comes back with a failed implant, um, we don't actually remember what it felt like. How passive it was. No, no. nobody remembers. We, you know, we, we don't remember that. We just, now we look at an implant failure and we say, well, you know, maybe you're not doing a great job cleaning or maybe whatever, or, you know, uh, typically it tends to lean in towards maybe the patient wasn't doing, or maybe it's the soft tissue wasn't good. But the reality is, is that that passivity will have impact on the long-term success of those implants. Now, one thing I would like to add before we move to the other techniques is that not all the materials for the definitive prosthesis can tolerate those lacks of passive fit. That's why titanium has been used for many years as a, a good material option because titanium gives. Titanium can deform if we are within those 80 mm -hmm. microns. It's a and, good point. And titanium can make your, your x-rays look good because when you start placing all the fixating screws and then you start torquing around the arch, the titanium deforms slightly. So at the radiographical evaluation, everything looks uh, that is seated. Right? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 not, not to throw out uh, terms from dental school, but the modulus of elasticity mm -hmm. is much different on a metal framework than it is on a ceramic framework. Correct. For certain materials, now we are recommending certain types of technologies for that definitive impression because we've been moving now from a material like titanium that gives to newer materials that are more stiff and won't tolerate those um, lacks of uh, passive fit and will turn into fractures. We've got uh, potential failure points. Mm -hmm. We've got screws that loosen and fracture mm -hmm. with lack of passivity. Mm -hmm. We've got components, abutments sort of pulling out of prosthetics. If there's mm -hmm. a abutment like in zirconia, it pulls out. Yeah. We've got fractures of these materials. The, the framework. Too. And then we have failures of implants, mm -hmm. right? So pressure breeds complications and again, is contrary to this concept of a lasting smile. Yeah. Right. So having lived in the world of full arch for 25 years almost, I can tell you that the liabilities that build up because of lack of passivity or materials, it does matter. So if we know that accuracy and passivity matters, mm -hmm. and we know that the analog impression is 80 microns or two hairs, mm -hmm. let's talk about some of the other options that we have. Where, where does the, in, the basic intraoral scanner, wh where does that get you relative to the scale? Yeah. So. Um Within the world of intraoral scanners, there are many different technologies, right? Um, the confocal microscopy technology seems to be the most accurate for full arches. And um, I would say that... That would be like a TRIOS? A TRIOS, a CEREC prime scan, mm -hmm. those are two, two great examples. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that the level of Accuracy, if we are referring to microns, we can be around um, 50 microns. Is this the best technology for full arch now? No, uh, intraoral scanning is not the, uh, the, the, the best technology. And that's where uh, we can get to the third option, which is uh, photogrammetry. Photogrammetry will capture the um, axis of the implant position, the X, Y, and Z uh, axis of the implant position, um, and it is very accurate. Photogrammetry though, it's not new in dentistry. It's been used in the dental laboratory. Many of these um, older generation of laboratory scanners, European systems had photogrammetry. What has happened lately in the last uh, five years is the adaptation of that technology into a chair side unit that we can use it at the moment of implant surgery for, for full arches. So to summarize with photogrammetry, we will be capturing very accurately the position of the implants, but still we need to have available an intraoral scanner to scan and capture the soft tissues around them, to capture the bite 
the maxillomandibular relations and be able to send the entire package of information to the lab so they can uh, proceed with the fabrication of the definitive prosthesis. Yeah, I don't think a lot of clinicians, when they're getting into the buying of new equipment, understand mm -hmm. that photogrammetry and intraoral scanning are, are they're interdependent. You need both if you're going to do photogrammetry. Yeah. Let's just talk about the accuracy. Uh, less than 10 microns, correct? Uh, between 10 and 20 microns, I would say it's a, a, a reality with mm -hmm. photogrammetry. The technology is there, but still, it's about the details. We've got to make sure that we check the uh, seating surfaces of these uh, flags every time before uh, inserting them and uh, making sure that we fully seat them. Yeah, and you know, sometimes, uh, oftentimes, if you're doing in office printing, you're using photogrammetry uh, to capture day of surgery, and there's no more difficult time to do a digital scan than right in the middle of a surgery, right? Yeah. So, so sometimes it's the, it's the bloody field, it's the surgical field that you're dealing with. And so, so keep in mind that you might not be getting its highest accuracy sometimes in, in the moment sometimes. Exactly, and, and that's where the fourth um, op alternative uh, came up, which is grammetry, which I would say it's a combination of using your intraoral scanner with the old school concepts of splinting, right? So we can place uh, any type of scan post in the mouth that we can splint, and then we can remove them as a one unit outside of the patient's mouth where we're going to be working in a more dry environment and mm -hmm. control environment, and we can do the uh, scan extra orally with our iOS, with our intraoral scanner. So that's uh, a grammetry, and uh, it seems to to help your uh, traditional scanner, but um, without a doubt, um, photogrammetry, I would say, is now the gold standard on these newer uh, digital technologies for full arch impressions. Just to kind of, you know, wrap it up, if you were right now to, to be looking to purchase a technology that's out there, and there's a lot of sales reps out there selling things, mm -hmm. um, tell me what excites you most price point and accuracy, like what would you recommend? Yeah, so um, as I said, uh, photogrammetry with no doubt is the, the new gold standard, uh, but there are very nice newer options in photogrammetry out there in the market that are uh, more affordable. And uh, if maybe you're not only focused on full arch, you do a, a few cases uh, per month, um, you can still incorporate photogrammetry into your practice. Uh, without a, a huge investment. So uh, options, uh, we've seen and been evaluating the um, Shining 3D uh, Elite Intraoral Scanner that is a combination with photogrammetry. So you can use that for um, pretty much everything from a single crown, implant crown, or a full arch using the, the combination of both features with one unit. We just bought two of these units for our own office here and and it it is multi-use, right? Mm -hmm. It's We're using it for everyday crown and bridge or intake appointments all the way up to, because it has this photogrammetry mode mode mm -hmm. that you can turn on, mm -hmm. it does both. Yeah. It's kind of a no-brainer and it's actually got a very nice price point. Well, I think we've done a really nice job of hopefully giving some clarity and, and some guidance as to you know what you're gonna use or maybe how you're gonna use it. Um, but again, passivity does matter. And uh, yes. well, thanks, Julian. I, I really appreciate your, your insights here. And I know that this is a, a really a sort of a keen topic and, and you've done a lot of research here. So we'll be back. Thank thanks, you. Julian.